My name is Greg Michelson. I'm a, a faculty and the associate dean here in the College of Engineering and Computer Sciences here at Marshall. And I serve as a co-director of the Bridge Technology Center with the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance. Um, what I'm going to be doing is talking to you a little bit about using eSpan 140 uh, to generate uh, preliminary designs for simple span or short span uh, steel bridges. Um, given time constraints, I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump right into the, uh, the presentation. Um, the first thing I want to do is uh, do a really brief introduction to the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance and show you where you can find uh, some information. Uh, and then I'll get a little bit more into the, uh, the technical background of eSpan 140 uh, and go through a really quick uh, uh, example on how to use it. Uh, and I think you'll see uh, as, we, as we get through the presentation, um, if, if those of you that were on the webinar, if you started an eSpan 140 project right now, you'd be finished with one uh, before I got finished uh, speaking. And so I think you'll find uh, as we're discussing it, uh, how easy it is uh, to utilize. Um, so you might have heard about uh, the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance uh, uh, throughout some of the um, presentations uh, in this webinar series, um, but uh, my general uh, description of it, uh, uh, so first off, you know, it, it, the program's been around for about uh, 15 years. It officially started in, in September uh, 2007. Um, and we have quite a few members in the Alliance. And the way that I like to describe that is it, is it tends to represent uh, every cog in the bridge delivery engine, uh, as it were. We have uh, members representing uh, producers and fabricators and service centers and contractors and design firms, uh, et cetera. So I think the, the first point I would make to anybody uh, interested in reviewing our resources or utilizing uh, eSpan 140 is that um, these uh, recommendations and whatnot truly do represent um, the, the voice of the industry as a whole, uh, as it were. So all of the uh, uh, plate sizes and shape selections and fabrication details really do represent uh, practical and economical uh, short span steel bridge design. Uh, I am certainly not going to have uh, time to go through all of the resources on the short span website, but I really do recommend uh, that everybody uh, on the webinar check this out. It's really easy to find. It's just shortspansteelbridges.org. If you just Google short span steel bridge alliance, it's going to be the, the first link that pops up. But there's a lot of uh, technical design resources, a lot of case studies uh, and, and uh, research materials and whatnot available on the website. Uh, you can also uh, sign up to receive the, uh, uh, the email newsletter uh, and whatnot. And so there's a lot of really good uh, info there. Um, these slides are going to be made available to you uh, uh, later on. So I'll just uh, move past here, but I'll say uh, it, the website's definitely worth, uh, worth checking out. Okay. So um, this uh, uh, project and the development of eSpan 140 really uh, stemmed from uh, a problem that, um, that we had, had noticed uh, in, the, in the industry over a number of years. And, and what we found is that um, bridge engineers are, are, are typically very well trained on the use of short span concrete bridges. And you know, if you look at the, uh, uh, the math and look at the, the data, you find that you know, more than 80% of the short span bridges in the United States are you know, typically concrete superstructures. And we find that many of the county and DOT engineers that we interact with um, are just not as familiar with uh, uh, you know, short span steel bridge design. Um, there's also a perception that steel bridges can be um, you know, perceived to be too complex, you know, uh, you know, they're Swiss watch like and sometimes that they're, they're too expensive, but that's not uh, necessarily the case. You can, you can use very simple uh, and practical details to develop a, a competitive and economical short span steel bridge. Uh, and, and you'll, you'll see that and, and uh, start to learn a little bit more about that throughout this uh, webinar series. What we wanted to do within SSSBA is to make that easier for you uh, as a user, whether or not you're a consultant engineer or you work for an owner agency, such as a state DOT or a county engineering department. We wanted to make it uh, as easy uh, uh, for you as possible to uh, vet a, a short span steel bridge solution as an option for a, a representative project. And so we spent a few years uh, uh, in an industry-wide effort uh, going through the uh, various uh, fabrication practices and, sh and uh, shape availability and plate availability uh, and, and whatnot to try and develop uh, simple standardized designs for short span bridges. We initially focused on uh, rolled beam uh, solutions, plate girder solutions, and, and buried structures. We've since added other options uh, such as uh, press break form uh, steel tub girders to the, uh, to the mix. Uh, but our initial effort was your, your typical everyday um, uh, short span steel bridges. 
Um, when you look at all the data that we generated, um, you know, there's there's quite a bit of uh, uh, information for each iteration of the uh, of the, uh, uh, in, in the matrix of designs. So, in, uh, what we did is we developed a, a web-based interface that allows you as a user a little bit of an easier time accessing uh, the standards, and that's what what ESPAN 140 is. Basically, uh, ESPAN 140 is a uh, a web-based lookup tool, if you will, to look up a particular standardized design uh, for your given project. Um, what I want to do is uh, now is I want to go through the background as to how those girders were designed and some of the decisions that were made uh, in terms of recommendations that would be made to you uh, as engineers. Um, so again, our goal was to uh, develop economically competitive uh, uh, girders. Uh, we wanted to use as many uh, repetitive details, repetitive member sizes, straightforward uh, plate selections. So, you know, you'll see a lot of half inch plate, a lot of three quarter inch plate, uh, stuff that the mills are rolling uh, every day. Um, in terms of the specifics of the matrix, um, so um, like I said, you know, we're the short span steel bridge alliance. So we define a short span as anything less than 140 feet. So our girders that we uh, designed, we started at 40 feet, went to 100, 140 feet, and we designed girders in five foot increments. So there's a girder for a 40 foot span, a 45 foot span, 50, 55, 60, so on and so forth. So whenever you utilize eSpan, what it will do is it will take your input, round it time that it uh, reports to you as a preliminary design uh, for your project. So it's, its primary value uh, is for use uh, as an estimation tool during the initial design phase. The same thing is, is done with girder spacing. So there were four different girder spacings utilized, uh, six feet, seven and a half, uh, nine, and ten and a half feet. And so based on your input criteria, um, eSpan will compute the you know, resulting girder spacing and then report the option for the next uh, highest up. Uh, the next highest up increment. Uh, for each of these different iterations, you know, we have the, the girders, the shear stud, the stiffener layouts, uh, the whole nine yards in terms of the uh, uh, the bridge superstructure for, for you as an engineer to, to use uh, in your preliminary estimations. Um, for each of those uh, uh, iterations in our, in our matrix of girders, we have four different girder types that we designed. We designed two different uh, plate girders, one that was homogeneous using 50 KSI steel throughout, uh, and one that was hybrid that utilized 70 KSI bottom flanges. We also designed uh, two different roll beam options. One was a, a sort of based on a lightest weight philosophy. So literally what is the lightest uh, uh, shape in the manual that will uh, support that uh, span. Uh, and then the other was designed to meet a target L over D of 25. We call that a limited depth design. So they're a little shallower in case you've got clearance issues, uh, hydraulic opening requirements. Um, but they, uh, they're a little heavier, again, but they're a little shallower. It just depends on what you need uh, for your project. Um, but at the same time, we wanted to make sure that we were um, recommending uh, solutions to you as engineers that made sense. Um, so this slide just contains just some of the, 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 the nitty gritty details for the, uh, the, the hardcore bridge engineers uh, on the webinar. So you, know, you can see a lot of the design assumptions and the design loads that we were utilizing were fairly typical uh, upper bound uh, loads that you would utilize for representative short span design. You, you can see, for instance, two inch haunch, uh, 15 PSF SIP unit weight, 25 PSF future wearing surface. A lot of uh, uh, pretty typical uh, assumptions that we were utilizing. We were designing for uh, you know, strength one, service two, fatigue, uh, and, and what have you. Now, Here's uh, where I think you know some of the, the the good engineering and the good interaction with our um, stakeholders and SS, SSSBA came in. So when we were developing eSpan, we designed girders for all of the different um, iterations that I mentioned earlier. But what we also wanted to do was make sure that we were recommending solutions to you as an engineer that made sense. So as an example, um, these are the weight comparisons for the girders that we designed with, uh, just as an example, a nine foot girder spacing, okay? And what you find is that the girders tend to uh, uh, follow two different trends. So if you see this curve right here, this, this green and purple curve right here, these are the girder weights corresponding to the rolled beam solution. So obviously as the, roll, uh, as the span length goes up, the girder weights are gonna increase. And that's true of, of all of the, uh, uh, the, the different uh, beam options. But the rolled beams really start to get pretty heavy 
uh, as you start getting uh, a little bit higher in span. Keep in mind, you know, these are rolled beams. There's only a discrete number of them available in the manual. So because of that discrete selection, the weight start jumping up pretty bit, uh, a good bit. And again, just because of the uh, uh, their configuration and their uh, cross-section uh, proportional limits and whatnot, you just end up uh, getting heavier uh, rolled beams compared to their plate girder counterparts in some of these higher spans. So what we said uh, in SSSBA is we said it really didn't make much sense to start recommending rolled beams as an option. I mean, let's, you know, barring, let's even just taking availability uh, off the table, those girders are, are really, really heavy. Um, so if you run E-SPAN, what you will find is that if you put in a span length that's past uh, 100 feet, E-SPAN will not generate a rolled beam solution. It will only generate a, a plate girder solution. Um, likewise, on the short end, uh, if you look at, let's say, a 40 or a 45 foot long bridge, the weights are, are pretty much the same. So there's really no need to use a plate girder on some of these shorter spans. So plate girders start at around 60 feet, work their way up, and rolled beams are cut off uh, at 100 feet. Uh, again, just wanted to make sure that we were recommending common sense solutions to you uh, as engineers. And so this is sort of a, a bar chart that ship, that utilizes or that that visualizes what I just said. So rolled beams are available from 40 feet to 100 feet, and then plate girders start at 60 feet. We also have hybrid options. We didn't start reporting those to users uh, until uh, 80 feet. Uh, given time constraints, what I want to do is I want to show you how eSpan works for you uh, as a user. So uh, again, first thing you do is you go to eSpan140.com. Uh, create an account. Uh, nowadays, uh, when we, we create loads of accounts for all sorts of things, this is really, really straightforward at this point. Uh, once you create your account, log in, it's time to input your specific project details. Okay, so when you log in, you'll see a, a window like this. You click start new project, and here you go. As you're going through the project, you'll see a series of windows that ask you for some really uh, uh, basic information uh, about your given project. So let's let's go through a representative project just to see uh, how this works out. So we're gonna uh, look at, or we're gonna do a, an eSpan project for a sample bridge. We'll say it's in Morgantown, West Virginia on Main Street, and we'll say it's 82 feet, four inches long. So what eSpan will do is round that up to 85 feet, and the solution that it reports to me will be the girder for the 85 foot span. Next, it asks me for how many traffic lanes. Uh, so we'll say this has got two lanes. We have a 30 foot roadway width. Uh, we'll say each parapet is 15 inches wide, and we'll utilize a three foot uh, deck overhang. Uh, and if you notice these little green question marks, if you hover over these question marks, it will actually highlight on the image on the right, it will highlight what dimension uh, that it's referring to. So it makes it really easy for you as a user uh, to ensure that you're inputting the proper data. Uh, eSpan can handle uh, sidewalks. I'm not using it. Uh, opt in for uh, uh, specifying pedestrian access and you just uh, spec out the number of sidewalks and what their widths are. Uh, we're not going to use any again for this one, but that's pretty easy to account for. Uh, lastly, it asks for the skew angle, the ADT, uh, and the design speed. Uh, and those really don't uh, affect the selection of the roll beam and plate girder options. They can affect some of the other solutions that eSpan uh, uh, generates, although for, for my presentation, I'm just focusing on the roll beam and plate girder options. Uh, after that, you hit go, give it about 30 or 60 seconds, and boom, this is what you get. You get a, a, a customized solutions book that contains all the necessary information to fabricate uh, the superstructure based on the project uh, that you input. So this is one uh, example solution. We have a composite uh, plate girder with a partially stiffened web. We have four girders spaced at eight foot, 10 inches. It computes that based on the information that you provided uh, in your project. And so the girder that it has reported is the girder for a nine foot girder spacing. So it's rounded that up. So this girder can handle an 85 foot span and a nine foot girder spacing. So it should definitely be, be able to handle this particular project since both the girder spacing and the span length are a little bit uh, less. In addition to, so going back to this, we have the uh, plate sizes, the top flange, bottom flange web. We have the diaphragm spacing, shear stud layout. Uh, we have typical fabrication details for shear stiffeners, connection stiffeners, bearing stiffeners. Um, we have our uh, example uh, fabrication details for our uh, diaphragms to act as lateral bracing. Uh, 
details. We have elastomeric bearing pad uh, details, whole nine yards. Uh, on top of that, again, like I said, I focus primarily on um, rolled beam and plate girders, but we do have buried bridge options that are reported out, as well as a variety of manufacturer solutions that are available to you uh, uh, to use on, on your given project. 